It's a very strange and dark piece. The organization, which originally came from Yorkshire Television, and my father, Donald Sindon, uh, was the star actor in it. Anton Rogers. Peter Egan, Bernard Hepton, and the gorgeous Jill Melford as well. I was in, aware that Dad was involved in this series because he had just finished uh, a long run of farces and comedies in the West End, curiously with Jill Melford, who's in this. Then he went to Yorkshire, where Peter Wills, the producer, uh, who was a very elegant man, and uh, w w walked with a cane, a beautiful ebony cane. Um, he needed to because he'd been in the tank corps during the war and had had his knee blown off, basically, in a tank. Uh, so he, he had a very dicky right leg, but always walked, I just remember this very elegant cane that he had all the time. And in those days, Peter Wills and there were various other really good drama directors at Yorkshire TV, and they came up with some stunning stuff. Peter Wills specialised in intelligent, well-shot and structured uh, pieces, and he was terribly keen on the author. I, 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 not just Philip on this, but uh, authors. He, he was very much an author's producer, and the word was everything for him. I can do one of two things, in the vain hope of helping you. I doubt if you can do anything. Oh, yes, two things. Like what? They are mutually exclusive. You must choose which. Must? I beg your pardon, I phrased that rather badly. If you want me to do either of these things, please say so. Try me. I wonder what attracted Dad to the role. I think it was probably because he'd only ever done one for want of a better word, baddie, uh, before, in a film called Eyewitness, 1956, I think it was, Muriel Box directing with um, Nigel Stock, and he played a, a sadist and a, a potential murderer. And I think because he'd been doing so many comedic or straight parts, he wanted to see what would happen if he broke away. He, I knew he was a bit shocked about Eyewitness because it was very much not the genre that he'd been used to. He'd been doing all the Doctor films and things like that, and the, either the, uh, the sexy or the, the comedy roles. Um, and I think this came along, the organisation came along, and suddenly it's a very dark character. Uh, you, you think he's nice and actually has a very thoroughly unpleasant edge to him. Um, no one, it's a very Machiavellian piece. No one trusts anyone. It, 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 it could be House of Cards. You know, it, it, it's, you don't know who to trust uh, at any level of the organisation. And then you realise that even Dad's character is subservient to somebody else. And you go, oh, where does this end? It's, it's a very, very clever piece. The chairman gave this interview to John Wimborn of The Observer. Yeah. The chairman has a passion for giving interviews to high-class journalists, for the sake of the organisation, of course. It'll be in next Sunday. Wimborne sent me the piece this morning. Well, that's nice of him. Yes. Dear Rodney, for your eyes only, please. If I've got any facts wrong, let me know soonest. Anyway, uh, Wednesday noon. For your eyes only. So you, uh, you can't show it to me? No. They knew they were doing quality. That was the thing. You can smell it straight away. And Yorkshire were famous. Yorkshire TV were famous for doing good drama. Bastards. Absolute bastards. I suppose he fell at the last fence. It's nice to know one doesn't need the job at all. So it might be rather fun, working for bastards. It fascinates me what a younger audience would make of this. Uh, what was it, 1972? And here we are as we speak in 2016. Do you know where this country's going to? Uh, to the dogs, why? No, into Europe. So you got there first. I now speak French better than anyone in your organization. I can order drinks and argue prices in six different languages. Are you telling me that's why you went there? 
I'm explaining why I'm worth a reasonable salary. The chairman, in addition to being excessively mean, is excessively puritanical. It comes cheaper. The fact that you can booze in six languages... I was serving the booze, not drinking it. Come, why? I think they will probably certainly get turned on by the piece because it's very gripping. Once you're through the first episode, at the, the, the very beginning of the first episode, you're, I'd completely forgotten until you showed me a tape of it. And I'm going, have, have you switched on halfway through something else? You know, and, and you realise how very clever that setup is. Well, have you made progress? I hope. And Mr. Pershaw has been telling me why he went to France. Oh, yes. Fascinating. Why? It relies on people concentrating. Uh, if you're in for a quick fix of something, it, it's not for you. If you enjoy Tinker Tailor, Smiley's People, if you enjoy the thought process of that and are prepared to go, what is going on, then uh, this is your piece because it, it's thought-provoking. I found it very disturbing. It's, it's got a very dark quality to it. My loyalty must be to Greatrick. My particular enthusiasm, my passion, must be the department in which I am called to serve. If you've ever worked in an office, you'll recognize certain characters and go, oh dear, yes. How did you know I was going to ask you that question? Well, every good public relations man must ask that question or something very like it. I think Dad would have had a bit of fun with this role because it's very out of his, what do we call it, comfort zone, his normal performance. What fascinated me when I watched it was that I suddenly realised a year later, 73, he was in Day of the Jackal, and the character is very, very similar. Um, the, 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 the pompous, rather unpleasant uh, Scotland Yard head of MI5 or something, whatever, whatever that character was in Day of the Jackal. And this is the same, and I am absolutely sure that he carried that over. He went, right, this is what we did in the organisation, uh, I, I think I'll use that, because we do, that's what actors do. What are you doing at lunchtime? I'm free. Veronica, you are extremely beautiful, but I shall never offer you lunch or anything. Successful executive. Of course. I was only joking. Of course. What do you want me to do instead of lunch? Uh, Rodney has received a piece from Wimborne of the Observer. The chairman thing? Yes. For... Rodney's eyes only. So he'll lock it in his desk when he goes out to lunch? Uh, I think he'd be thrilled that Network On Air have somehow been able to get it out again. If you like rather peculiar, dark and mysterious programmes, this is the one. I don't know, new number two. High frustration tolerance. 